actually my architecture journey to everyone. Most of, ilan yung mga estudante dito? Okay. Okay, so I just want to share with you my journey. So at least I can maybe give some insight on how to be positive in our journey. It's going to be a tough journey, but it's worth it. Uh, I graduated in UST 1992 and I tried to work for two years here and it's quite difficult because you know the salary here is quite low and then my parents still give me allowance for my gas to go to work so I was thinking there's something wrong with, with being raised here so I decided to pack up and go to Singapore uh, so I was quite lucky. 1994, I got a job, and then started working. But the problem, so this, take this um, very positively, please. So I, I worked in a big corporate office, architecture corporate office, and after five years of architecture, uh, architecture studies, I was like a cat monkey <laughs> for one year I was just do doing toilets and staircases there's no design involved I was so disillusioned so I almost gave up but again we are quite resilient people we're Filipinos we're very resilient so my strategy was I think I cannot work in a corporate office for now so I decided to look for a boutique architecture office in Singapore. So I was quite fortunate. I was accepted in SCDA. And I worked there for four and a half years. And I was thrown into the deeper side of the pool. Meaning, when I first came in, uh, my former boss just gave me a few projects. And they said, okay, you run the show, you do the contract administration, you run everything, you, you do everything. So I learned everything. It's either you swim or sink. So I chose to swim. So I learned so much detailing, running the site, and um, basically how to survive and make a project uh, work. So one of my project was a semi-detached, you call it a uh, duplex here a duplex house and I got close to the client and he introduced me to another client, a friend of his, saying that, oh, uh, he got a condominium unit in Singapore, it's one of the oldest, uh, it's somewhere in Holland Village. He said, oh, he do not want to go to big architectural firms because it's just an interior design of a condo unit. So. Architects, you know, sometimes we are always in our high horse. You turn down small projects. So I gladly accepted. I said, okay, I need some extra cash. It's only a thousand square meters, no, square feet of um, apartment. So I gladly accepted, designed it for like, I, I, I was um, honest with this Mr. Ho. I was honest with Mr. Ho. I said, uh, I'm a freelancer and I cannot devote my time to you because I have a day job. That is fine, it's just a small condominium unit. And uh, after that, I, I only can meet him on Saturdays and Sundays after my, my work. So I did complete the project and then he had, he had a housewarming party and that I didn't know, oh, sing, most Singaporeans are actually quite low profile, they're quite low key. So this Mr. Ho guy uh, had a party. So I, I didn't even go to the housewarming party because I was working late for my, my boss. And then he called me up after the party and then he said, my sister liked what you did to my apartment. And she actually wanted to invite you to to do up her house so i said okay okay but i said same deal i could only meet you on the weekends because 
it's my freelance job. Uh, again, he said, oh, I did brief my sister and uh, she knows how, how the deal is. So my wife dropped me off to the house and then I didn't even know that the house had security guards outside. We call it the Gorkas. They are Nepalese um, soldiers who protect most of the Singapore officers. I mean, uh, mga mayor or president, this Gurkhas, the Nepalese, they are willing to die for, for their bosses. So anyway, so my wife dropped me off and then she was saying, who are you meeting? I said, I don't know, Mr. Ho's sister. Uh, oh, uh, I think you're in trouble. I said, why? <laughs> oh, because it looks like a tight security outside the house. I said, oh, I don't know, I'm just a mere Filipino. <laughs> looking for extra job you know so I did went inside and then Mr. Ho's sister uh, talked to me on the design brief of her house uh, new house and then she was saying that oh these are the floor plans the blueprints and um, please uh, how many weeks do you need uh, for you to design the house the interior of the house I said, oh, I need about maybe three to four weeks to design with the complete scheme, uh, the concept of your interior design. So after that, it was briefly about f only four, 40 minutes of discussion of what was their wish list to the house. So I did ask her, ma'am, uh, I'm just curious why are there Gurkhas outside your house? And then she was still humble. I didn't even know. She said, oh, it's because of my husband's job. That's why we have the security outside. So I brought home the plans. I took a cab home. And then I sh my wife was very excited at home. And I said, so, so, so who are, who's, who's that person that you, you met? So I, I don't know. She said that it's because of her husband's job. That's why they have the Gurkhas outside. So I opened up the blueprint and then I showed my wife who's the house owner and then at that time Lee Sen Gong, who's the pre uh, Prime Minister now, is just a Brigadier General at that time, that was many years back. And then she was said, oh this is the son of Lee Kuan Yew, you're doing the house of Lee Kuan Yew. I said, oh shit, okay. <laughs> so after that, I decided uh, I cannot do freelance anymore because it's a big task. So. In our life, architectural life, you have to do a lot of sacrifices and you have to be noble in what you do. I could, although the, I did tell Madame Ho that I, I'm only in to do this as a freelance and she accepted. But when I, when I assessed myself, I said I cannot give 100% of my time if I'm doing this for freelance and it's not nice for my boss. Um, if you Google SCDA, they're one of the prestigious architectural firm in Singapore as well. Ayala Land is using them right now. Unfortunately, they tear down one of Loxin's house, I mean, hotel in Ayala. Uh, SCDA is building the most expensive condominium units now in, in, in Ayala. I have to say goodbye to them and because and then I have to open my own company because I have to serve the Prime Minister, at that time the Brigadier General. So that was my journey. I quit my job, opened up my firm, and I serviced the family for about 10 years. I even had the privilege to present to Lee Kuan Yew at that time, when the late wife of Lee Kuan Yew suffered a stroke. So I was really, really fortunate to meet the big man. Even my wife haven't met Lee Kuan Yew herself. So I'm deeply honored to, to serve in Singapore. So anyway, so after 14 years of my own practice, I've been doing houses, endless houses, and again, I wasn't happy. I was, it's not enough. So in our journey, you will have milestones. And you have to listen to yourself, to your heart. Why are you craving for more? And you have to 
really assess it. Do we are visual people, so you have to write down what's the pros and the cons of in your current situation now. So when I was, I'm doing quite well, 14 years, but I'm just doing residential houses. In USD, we would we would do multi-disciplinary houses like mixed developments. I'm itching for that. I was itching to to design big projects. So. Well, I didn't want to give up, but at that time, there's a void inside that said, I, I can do more, but the opportunity is not there. So, Ong and Ong came to the story. Ong and Ong uh, chairman, uh, Mr. Ong Tsubun, talked to me and said, why don't you merge with me? Um, this was almost four years ago. Said, come merge with me and um, let's make it happen. You can lead Ong and Ong Philippines. Uh, we're gonna establish an office in the Philippines, and you can go back to your your country. And I it took me six months to digest to to again to assess the pros and cons of giving up your own practice joining a corporate company again, a corporate architectural company. Uh, so I did assess, because, okay, basically when I left a good job, I have this notion that, oh, if you have your own practice, you can control your time, you, you can have more quality time with your family, and then, okay, let's, you know, quit the job and make your own office, but I was 100% wrong. I don't have a boss to answer to, but I have clients to answer to. Those are my bosses, they're my paid masters. So I work Saturdays and Sundays as well. So it's, it's in our life, it's a service industry. All our clients are our bosses, so that's one of the things that I wanted to share with you. We, we have to make our clients happy at the end of the day. So anyway, going back to Ong and Ong, uh, I joined them and then learned the, the tricks and the books, how to be a corporate guy again. Uh, and then I'm happy, Ong and Ong Philippines is established. Uh, 2015, we were registered here, I mean in registration of company, but only eight months, nine months ago that we set up an office in Ayala, uh, same time as Duterte, July 1st. So, okay, I just want to make it um, a little bit happy. I have um, an on and on goodie bag here. I will throw a question later. We have all our anthology books here. We have five books, what we have done. I will ask a question. The first person who raised up their hand and answer correctly would have our on and on book. Okay. Okay, on and on is established in 1972. Our founder is Mr. Ong and he is actually the first elected president of Singapore. Uh, five president prior to he, he, him he, okay, Lee Kuan Yew appoints the president, but Mr. Ong is the first elected president because uh, people, Singaporeans are complaining actually, say, how come we have to, to vote for the mayors, the MPs we call, but um, the, our president, you nominate them. So he was the first elected president and he had to step down from the board and to become a full-time um, president. And then Mrs. Ong took over the, the office and uh, made it work. So this is our vision, to be the designers of, of our age. Uh, the mission to improve the world in which we live while conserving the environment through excellence and sustainable design. Our core value, crest, 
creativity, responsibility, ethics, success, and teamwork. Our organization, our organization is consists of, uh, we basically have a mantra for 360 design. We have mechanical, electrical, structural engineer on board, in-house. We have landscape, we have interior designer, we have, uh, what do you call that? Ahensha. They just do, okay, I'm sorry, I forgot about them. They, we do corporate brochures, we do, uh, what do you call that, Nan? No, <laughs> it's not advertising. Close. It's like uh, doing identity to clients, corporate identity. Branding. Okay, yeah, we have branding in-house as well. It's a new, it's a new sister company that we, we merged. So these are the, the people, top people of Ong and Ong Singapore. We do, this is our CSR. We have, um, do a lot of social responsibility to this, uh, in Singapore and outside of Singapore in Malaysia as well. So this is the 360 solution that I've mentioned earlier. So, okay, when, so we were established 1972, but unfortunately, Mr. Both our founders uh, passed away, and then the son took over the company, and then we started uh, becoming bigger uh, regionally. So we have uh, all these are the, all the offices. We have thirteen uh, offices in the country. The second youngest is the Philippines. The youngest is in Bangkok and Thailand. So we have more than 200 awards in the four, uh, four decades. Uh, just want to show you briefly all our our portfolio. So these are the master planning. Just read below. Okay. So basically, at the bottom, you you could see how our 360 solution in our project. So it's like a one-stop shop. We would uh, tell the clients that. We could be your architects, or we could be your engineers, or we could even be your branding guys if, if the project need, just need the branding. So we did this project in China. Architecture in, uh, is a master planning. Okay. This is how it looks like. This is a, a mixed-use airport. This is in Malaysia. This is in Indonesia. China. Again, in Indonesia. In Malaysia. So, if you notice, um, we actually our company we don't have like a certain design style that we shoved into the mouth of our clients. We actually have we have a mentality that. We interview the clients, what do you guys want? We actually, okay, this is a new office in our system. It's called the Experience Design. Uh, Experience Design is a team of uh, people in our group that interviews clients and what they need. They, we really ask what do they want before we even lift up our pens and, or our mouse to start designing. We would def it's quite extensive, Some, depends on the scale of the project. Sometimes it could be one week, sometimes the interview could be a month because we have to interview their staff, the top uh, management, the middle and the, even the, the workers. We will interview them and even their clients. So we will take surveys and show the clients that actually, hey, this is what your clients or your uh, clients need and then we should follow that design brief, not yours, because we are serving your clients. So this is our experience design expertise. So some of them, I'll show you later what the experience design have uh, touched in China. Okay. For transportation infrastructure, we did a few 
uh, MRT station in Singapore and actually we got like about 16 MRT stations in, um, in, in Malaysia. How I wish we have uh, a train system here in the Philippines also. We're getting there. So this is the infamous uh, Nicole Highway. Well, it collapsed, but we didn't do the problem. The, the engineer, uh, the Australian engineer, was jailed for six years. There's a problem with the uh, tunneling, and then one Singaporean worker died. Uh, it's quite unfortunately, but it was our first MRT station. Yeah. I just brief through all this. They, they, Um, okay, as an architect, just want to let you know that when we were doing this, actually we need special architects. We are not expert of the tra uh, train station or airports. We need to get another con external consultant to, for example, airports. We need to have an ex uh, airport consultants to be on board. So you, you, we can't do everything. And then we have to tell this to our clients that we need the MRT train uh, track station experts. We we just as an architect we have like a conductor in the symphony orchestra. We will orchestrate everything. They will be under our wing and um, make make the construction harmonious as much as possible. So we are not trained expert, but we do interview. Uh, every town or every city or every uh, area we interview them what kind of MRT station do you want to represent your your city okay. okay in our line uh, we were shortlisted for this one. We were quite heartbroken. This is uh, Singapore Terminal One. We design. I mean, we joined the design competition uh, with a big corporate architectural office. You will be some of the perks of designing, right? You will be collaborating with international architectural office. We have designed this with UN Studio, and we were really uh, flattered. Although we were a runner-up, we didn't win this. But at the same time, another architectural office won this competition. But we got our this, uh, experience design team to be on board because they have to interview all the retail tenants. Uh, how do they would want their retail spaces to be designed. So this is one of our special feature in our office that we do listen and interview before we design. Unfortunately, uh, UN Studio and us didn't get this project. Okay. Uh, samples of our residential multi-units, the condominium. This is in Cambodia. We have an office in uh, Cambodia, in Myanmar. We won an award in 2015 as well. It's under construction right now. In India, we have an office in India as well. In Alba, Singapore. Uh, again, okay, like we did the architecture here and we did the, uh, the landscape for this project. Okay, Great World is quite a quite an old uh, multi-design building. There's an office block and a condominium block, and there's uh, a retail retail block. Uh, Mrs. Ong designed this uh, project actually, and uh, it's still standing well. And yeah, we're quite proud of this project. Hospitality. 
uh, we so again we do interior also and we did this in Mauritius we did the interior and the lighting design for for this resort this is how it looks like inside oh this is one of our like uh, favorite project is in Sri Lanka uh, this is about 150 years old uh, hotel and we won the design competition again and in, in Singapore we we do take care of our heritage our old buildings uh, places like this that's why as a Filipino it's really quite sad to hear like sometimes like El Hogar almost got pulled down people started stealing the railings inside uh, it's a nightmare uh, I wish we could do something about it uh, in Singapore when we do restoration projects we have URA the urban redevelopment authorities we are quite pragmatic they are quite pragmatic as well time change the building use change, the spatial use change. So URA is like our city hall when we submit things. They approve this, but every 10 years they change the, the master planning of Singapore and they update it through the test of time. So if we have a certain project like this, like for example the colonial shop houses, the pre-war shop houses, we can restore the first 7.5 meters of the building, I mean the two-story house, but we can extend the behind and can make five-story. These are the things that I think we are lacking here in the Philippines. And it's quite sad. Uh, I hope we we stop tearing down old buildings here. It's, it's quite sad. Uh, if you see Escolta, I've seen a booth here, the Escolta people. Uh, I hope you join them because they're actually the voice of the people who really try to take care of the old buildings in, Man in Manila. So anyway, going back to this, we don't want to get too sentimental. But again, this is just how to, okay, as an architect, we are also entrepreneurs. You just have to show your clients that we know money, business, we know how to turn the key Developers are not evil people. They just want you as an architect to tell them by doing so, they can get their money back after five years, after maybe three years. But as long as you can keep the old buildings, but at the, at the back or at the center or the annex of it, you can show them that don't tear down the old one, but you know, because you, you can use this as a magnet for people to come and see you and how have you made the old architecture and the new architecture blend then it will be a top there's a story if you notice on and on projects also have stories all projects have stories behind them and developers love this and they would use this to sell to their tenants or to to their uh, clients that we hired this so and so architects and they built a story not just based on GFA and you know like maximize everything there's no even not even open spaces for people to relax you know so this is one of our happy projects because we have restored a 150 year old building and it's well received um, I wish we could do more uh, of this kind of projects uh, here in the Philippines this is how it looks like now uh, we got out everything uh, oh sorry but this is in Qatar it's okay uh, we got out everything we did all the plumbings everything new the electrical air conditioning system everything was new uh, so I haven't seen it though I would like to go to Sri Lanka in Qatar uh, Park Hyatt in Doha okay also Park Hyatt in Saudi Arabia we did this uh, Regency Okay, uh, this in Vietnam, we have an office in Vietnam as well. Our, uh, we didn't get the architecture, 
uh, portfolio for this, but we did the interior for, for this hospitality in Vietnam, in Saigon. This is how it look, looks like. In Kuala Lumpur, Sunway Hotel. If you notice, in every region, we still keep the language of the people. So, as a Singaporean architectural office, we, we digest the surroundings and the culture of the place. And then, actually, the world is getting smaller. We're ASEAN now. All the culture is the same, and it was twisted or it moved, we, we hibernate to a different one because of our culture and the, the tradition. So we listen to them and then put it up into an architecture or interior language to suit the situation or the, the location. In India, one of our Great Eastern Hotel. In India, the same, the interior. Quincy. Uh, okay, I uh, just want to talk a little bit of this hotel. Uh, same thing, uh, this is one of the examples how our 360 design solution uh, package that we gave to our client. This is actually the sister, the younger sister of Elizabeth Hotel it's in an orchard. Elizabeth Hotel management came to us and then they were asking there's so many hotels in Orchard and they have to admit they're losing clients. They are worried why are they losing um, patrons. And so they came to us and then we listened to what worries them. And basically their worries are we're losing clients and not a lot of young uh, travelers are going into their hotels. So, again, we did uh, experience design and then we did talk to the people around. We did survey orchard people. What do you think about Elizabeth Hotel? And then the survey came back because it sounds old, you know, it's like you're, we don't want to go there because it's old. I know it's well kept but I don't like it, it's not in, you know? So, so we did tell our clients that you're losing clients because of this. These are the sentiments of people. So we did the branding for them as well. We did the architecture. It's, it's, it's in the same compound of Elizabeth Hotel, it's at the back. So we, we begged our clients, told them, you give every, all the package to us, we want to call it something else, not another queen. Uh, Elizabeth Hotel because that's one of the problems. So that's why we coined it to call it uh, Quincy. Um, so like random chaos, if you take a look, and it's a very small piece of land. Uh, and then the swimming pool is on top, and then we try this, okay, it's quite special this building because there's no restaurant, there's a cafe there. Uh, because with our survey, we we did uh, get the survey back and said that there's a lot of travelers, business traveler clients that do not want to stay in a hotel as well, and they don't do not want to go to a backpackers hotel. So that's why we we did tell our clients that your hotel do not have do not need to have a restaurant. You can have a cafe as a business traveler you'll be lucky if you could have breakfast before you go out for a meeting the whole day and then come back. Because this is Singapore. You, every corner that you go, there's a place for you to, to eat. And there's the mother hotel, the Elizabeth Hotel have a restaurant anyway. So these are uh, the things that you get when you interview people, when you design a building for them. Okay, M Hotel, we did the M, it's quite old, but you know, it rocks as well. Okay, this is the inside of the Quincy Hotel. Everything from, uh, we did the lighting design, we did their branding as well. We did the landscape. 
uh, we did some uh, interior for a ship. This is how it looks like inside. Uh, we did a uh, Silk Chris launch. We have a Singapore Airlines launch here in Terminal 3. Uh, we did that one as well. My brother, another studio in, in Singapore, did the project here in Terminal 3. This is how it looks like. We, we won, even though we're Singaporeans, we still have to fight for a project in Singapore. So we, we managed to get uh, Sydney. Uh, this is Sydney. Uh, we, we got the one here in Naia 3. And Korea, uh, there's six of them. Residential interiors. We just slowly breeze through all of them. If you notice, we like to use natural materials. We like to use stone. We like to use timber. Uh, you cannot deny it. Uh, psychologically, at the back of your mind, when you see, when you touch, when you feel a natural material, you feel like you are relaxed and you're at home. Commercial projects. We do interior projects as well, commercial offices. We did SGX, like um, stocks exchange, we call it. Here we call it stocks exchange. Uh, all our corporate office interior design. Okay. Commercial industry. Uh, Audi in Singapore. Okay, we can stop here. Uh, one of my brothers in Nong Nong did this one. Um, sometimes you will be faced with questions when you get interviewed by clients. Most of the time they would ask you, have you done a mosque before? And obviously your answer is no. We managed to get this project because not just because that we have done so many mosques before, but we did tell them that it's not, well, experience help. The experience would help, but it's the, the architectural ear that you lend to them and how we digest the, the design brief and then put it into papers and make the building to be a sign of your, your institute. So we got this mosque, it's quite a modern mosque in Singapore. So these are all our landscape uh, portfolio. We are not the architects for this one, but again, we are not choosy. We, even though there's, we work harmoniously with, with all our brothers in, in Singapore. We did the, the landscape for all of this, and yeah, we learn from them. They learn from us, and that's that's how the S Singapore architectural scene became strong. We don't find them as a competitor, and I can sense that here. It's happening here in the Philippines as well, and it's good. It's it's a, it's a very good start. Okay, we have this uh, thing. We won a few projects because of this technology. We have this integrated environmental solution. So, uh, Singapore government is quite strict. You can just breeze through. Because sometimes as architect, we have to be sensitive with our neighboring buildings. And not like, I'm sorry, but in 
it's bad for architects to bitch about other architects. But you know, uh, Frank Gehry sometimes would have those aluminum claddings, and then they didn't have this at that time when he was building it. Because the sun on summertime, when it reflects to his building to the rest, you have you could have bushfire. So with this technology, we on and on we use technology to be sensitive, and how we don't block the eastern sun and try to block the western sun from from ourselves or to the neighbor. This would help before we even go too deep to the design. We we would show you how how harmonious our new building could be with the other new or old buildings and how we could save aircon money or electricity bills to our client. I mean, I'm quite happy, uh, you call it LEED here or LED? LED design is quite rocking here right now. So as an architect, I think we should be doing a lot of sustainable uh, design. We should be conscious when we do this. And we have this kind of technology to, as a tool to help us uh, be a friendly architect to our neighbors. Even wind flow, we can study wind flow. Sometimes this project um, in Bedok, is, we cut it into four blocks. And it's a government project. And the committee was quite upset why are you cutting our building into four blocks? You know, we're in Singapore. We have racial harmony. We have Indians, Malays, Eurasian, and Singapore Chinese. That's not a way to to show that we are harmonious by cutting our building into four. So luckily, we have this this technology. No, we're not cutting the building into four because. Is we are doing it because we, we want to save air con for you guys. We want all the alleys, almost like green belt, the open areas. People, when people walk or you know the, the shed, you don't have to have air con. And then we said, okay, it can save you so much money without air con, you know, the, the, uh, all these walkways. And they would understand after that, as long as I think clients are not very stubborn as well. They will have reasons why, because in their mind, this building should be built as one because to, to signify it. Because it's actually a sports complex, um, a clinic, a library, and uh, another community, ah, a community center. And for them, the committee was saying, in their mind, a building should be one because it signifies, ah, significa, uh, signifies Singapore is be, we are being one so after explaining to them because it could save the environment it could have could even uh, it won't block the, the the wind flow to the the surroundings and they accepted the proposal okay even facade design we would uh, use the technology, how the porosity of the aluminum cladding or the cladding that we use or specify could cut down the, the heat, the, the, the emission of the, the UV. So we have lighting design, lighting studio in our office also. So we were not the architects for this, but we did the lighting, we, we gladly designed the lighting for them. Okay. So we did the light architecture and the lighting. This is Rankin and Hill. This is our engineer wing. Again, if you see, we are not the architect for this building, but we are the mechanical and the METF for, for this one. So all this. Uh, uh, we are the architects and the METF people. Project innovation. So, hang on. So, like for example, this one, project innovation studio is our studio. It's like a PM here, project managers. 
we have our project manager team in Singapore also. We know who they are, Woha did with this uh, beautiful building. And we couldn't get in as a landscape architect because they did their own landscape architecture. They're awesome in interior design. And um, yeah, we were the project manager for, for this building. Immortal is our branding, thanks, uh, branding wing. Like this one, Philip Stark did this design, the design consultant for this in Beach Road. But we did the branding for the, the building and uh, the brochures, uh, the know-how, all these signages in the building, we did that for them. Well, obviously we're not the architect for this, but we did the branding for Marina Bay Sands and uh, most 90% of the restaurants in, uh, in MBS. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the well, long talk. Uh, basically, ending my journey is it goes to say that when you take something like all industry will have their own sets of problems. You just listen to your heart. Five year course in the architectural uh, school. It's really, really difficult. Some of my clients, oh no, classmates, who became my clients because they, they gave up architecture. They became um, journalists. It's still related to architecture though. Uh, they became the developer and they became my boss, you know. Uh, Sometimes they would say how I wish I stood my ground and still become, a, uh, still like an architect like you and be designing for them, but it was too late for them to turn back. So for me, it's not a crime to turn back, but again, we only live once. So you guys are young, you listen to your heart, you have to take necessary risk everything is a risk i'm not a gam gambler but you have to gamble something like for me i'm really happy right now i'm designing uh, mixed developments in the, even in mongolia i designed a building in mongolia i'm still learning i'm 47 years old you know how thick their walls are in ulaanbaatar it's about 400 and put 500 because of I learned something new it's insulated they have heaters I didn't even know it would go below uh, minus zero in four months in a year and concretes they insulate the concrete the foundation otherwise it will just start cracking so until now I'm still learning and our journey is a very nice one it could be very difficult, but I think it will be very, very good for the soul and for our personal growth. There's a quick one, last one, how Ong and Ong is rocking right now in Manila. There's another slide, a quick one. We're nine months old, and um, just briefly, we have one, one of our biggest projects right now in the Philippine, uh, Philippines is in South Cotabato. Uh, it's a mall. Okay, this is the mall that we're doing in South Cotabato. It's in Mindanao. There's a lot of Filipino architects in Singapore. And when we got this in 2015, then they were saying that are you guys crazy? Why are you going to Mindanao? But says, well, the project is there. The problem, the problem with the developers here in, in Metro Manila, they keep on saying, we, I did some, you know, uh, PR with them. Okay, you know, Ong and Ong is well established in Singapore, but you guys are baby here. You got no track record. You know, so it's quite difficult. So again, I have to bite the bullet. Uh, I was born in Tondo. I'm a Tondo boy. 
from Metro Manila, we are worried to be in Mindanao. But the projects are there. Especially now, our president is, you know, is from Davao. All the projects are outskirts in the, in the north or in the south. And, but the project is booming there. So we are not scared. We are, we, we're excited to show our expertise in all over the region. If the developer do not want to talk to us over here, maybe after five years, after this project is completed, then we could discuss again. The, so I'm just telling that you have to find an alley or a, a road for you. If people don't want to talk to you here in Metro Manila, you can go to the south. There's so many land there for you to, 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 to develop, you know. So this is how it looks like. The concept, the story that I use this is too bright here. But actually, I did a major research. I researched about, took me about two to three weeks of Tinalak. Tinalak is an indigenous material of the south. And I, we, I went even beyond that. Because bef before the Etas, all this, when before the countries were established thousands of years ago, we are part of the Micronesia, the trade spices, all this, and before even the Spaniards came. Tattoo is... Uh, hi, Norman. <laughs> Tattoos are our identity. I, our identity to be part of our tribe. And when the Spaniards came and then said that tattoo are bad, you know, you should, this is the you know the temple or temple of God. You shouldn't be putting tattoos. So the weavers they use the fabric to distinguish their clan, their dialect, and. So this architecture has all the tinala, of course, with the modern twist. To them, I, I have used the, the hexagon all over the place because hexagon is like, they are the dream weavers, they call it, the tinala ladies who, who weave them. The, the hexagon is quite a spiritual shape. Uh, it signifies the, the leaves of the forest and when, you, when they see the leaves flying or falling down from the trees, and uh, it signifies uh, Mother Nature. So I sold this to my clients, they accepted it, and yeah, it wasn't changed. The concept wasn't changed. Uh, yeah, we're quite proud. We can't wait. It will take three years to, to complete this. Uh, groundbreaking, haven't even started. Soon, soon. Yeah. Uh, the hexagonal um, concept. So we're quite happy. We are trying to give uh, the Singapore flavor at the same time with the guidance of Filipino heritage to the architecture and the interior. This is where are we coming? We are coming in to enhance, not to fight with, not to uh, you know to rock the boat. It's to enhance. We. We are architects. We will be meeting other architects around the region and we will grow from them and they will grow from us. So we have to have that kind of mentality, please. Um, a house that I designed in Ayala, Alabang. Uh, second story slab has been casted. Uh, the C shape uh, is being supposed to be casted mid of April. Is how it looks like. Another house in the in Quezon City. We haven't even uh, bid this one yet. We have to bid it to the general contractors. But this is how the inside looks like. Okay. Uh, another building in Quezon City. Same owner. I'm quite happy. Uh, he liked what I did for his house. And then at the same time, he said, well, I'm building a building. Uh, there's an architect involved already, but I'm not happy with the facade. Would you get angry if I just ask you, engage you as a facade 
designer. I said, sure, it's okay. I'm, I'm not offended. He said, as long as the architect who's on board is not upset, uh, I'll, you know, sure try to enhance your facade. So I gave him four options. So yeah, I'm not sure which one is still thinking. We did an office here for Densu. Uh, it just completed a few months ago. This is how it looks like. It's a six-story high. Well, we didn't do the building, but the six-story, 4,000 square meter of office space is an agencia. Uh, it's a Japanese agencia uh, at agency. This is one of my chairman's baby project eight months ago. Oh, no, eight years ago he was here. Uh, we did this uh, in Quezon Avenue. Uh, it's called Capital Towers. Uh, the third block was just completed like last year. Uh, I think it's being painted now. I, I drove past, well, I was taking an Uber cab and I saw it's, it's, yeah, it's completed already, third block. Uh, uh, Master planning in Davao, not, not, I'm not sure what's happening yet. So I always fly to Davao to, to, to show our expertise also. Another one for Davao Light. Uh, it was a design competition. It was done after Christmas last year. Uh, they haven't made up their mind yet uh, who is the winner, but hopefully we could do something in Davao. Okay, thank you guys. Oh, um, the question. Uh, before I give this, uh, when was Ong and Ong Singapore established? Sorry, she was forced. Okay, thank you guys. Okay. Um, I just like to ask, do you have a personal advocacy that you adopt in it? Or um, let me just say, if you are direct. Hello? Yeah. You are a director now in Ang Ang Philippines. As a mentor to your subordinates, what's a uh, philosophy that you impose to them? Well, I have. Uh, I was invited by Blueprint Magazine to to have a talk in Cebu for their designer talk, and I was actually having my holiday time last December. Uh, with my family, my wife and my two kids went and me. I fetched them from Singapore and then we went to Cebu. I was having a holiday, family holiday. And then I, I actually asked my wife, oh, by the way, you should have a very supportive spouse to be an architect. <laughs> if you don't have a supportive spouse, you will, you will remarry. <laughs> or quit architecture. It's like that. Because architecture is like your wife or your husband as well. Anyway, I'm not going to preach about that. But I asked my wife first. I, I say, um, I'm going to disappear for a few hours. We will have to go to this hotel. I have to talk about uh, the design philosophy of Ong and Ong and how, as a Filipino architect, learn from Singapore and then coming back, what was your journey? So that's why it's not a similar discussion. It's, that one is more personal. It's, this one is much, much bigger crowd. So yeah, of course, my wife said, OK, of course, uh, it's good. Then I said, oh, may I request my kids to be in the dinner? And then she was asking, no, you want to have your own time with your architect's friends to share. And you know, I said, no, but I would like for my kids to listen how their dad talk. My, you know, like where does your dad go to when he's not at home? How I am so passionate about the craft that I took and try to share these positive vibes to fellow architects. And my wife was quite touched and, you know, almost teary eyed. And they okay, there was a, so they joined the dinner. So, yes, I. I, I do support that, and there's no TF here, you know, we are just sharing, because if I could 
change the mind of five future architects here. I will be very, very happy that I did that. And then instead of just sleeping at home or painting at home, I'm a painter too. I'd love to paint. There's another journey that I didn't regret before I took up architecture. I'd love to paint. I've been painting, I've been exhibiting all over the region. I just had a one-man one show, my 18th exhi art exhibit last November here in Siguada Gallery. I didn't regret that painting is taking a back seat and architecture is the driver because it's not that I love art lesser than architecture, but I'm quite pragmatic too. It's quite difficult. Actually, it's the same. Okay, I'm talking to myself. But, no, no. Like even, okay, I'm just gonna about to say, there's 1,000 artists, painter. There's gonna only be one Picasso that who could make it. Same goes for doctors, right? And lawyers and architects or engineers. There will be like 50,000 architects, but there's could only one Loxin, one Maniosa. So who cares, right? If you don't reach that pedestal and become a star architect, this is second to it. Even though, you know, I'm, I'm no one, but I'm trying to to give back the positive vibes to the future architects? I hope I answered your question. <laughs> I'm babbling. But yeah, so the reason why I didn't pick full-time painting because I know from the very start I couldn't feed my family being a painter full-time. But then again, I love architecture a lot, immensely. I love architecture a lot. And I knew it's not the Michelangelo time that you could be a painter, you could be a scientist, you could be an inventor, you could be an engineer. Getting tougher, but you know. So I chose architecture. So if you're in the bandwagon right now, I think you will be happy. Kapalam mo lang yung apok mo. It's really tough. You have to have a thick skin, thick guts, and follow your heart. That's all. Yeah. Uh, did you take up the board exam to practice there? Uh, no, 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 not yet. Now, yes. I am actually, I had to, uh, interviewed me, so unfortunately, our degree at that time it's not recognized in Singapore. So, but when I had my 14, uh, 14 years of uh, practice, I got my friends to sign for me, okay? And it was a big, in the industry, it was quite, my friends were telling me, oh, you know, the Lee, the Lee family, or you know, the whole family, they were like engaging a non-licensed architect, you know, at that time. Uh, to be their architect, but the problem is I'm the one who's willing to listen to them and willing to change the concept. I don't have... Okay, that's why me and Ong and Ong, our philosoph philosophy have connected in a way because we don't have a certain st style that we follow that we have to like, no, take it or leave it. This is, you know... Uh, it, CSYA or Bed March kind of architect or Carry Hill design. We sit down, we listen to what do you want. And the architectural language changed from project to project because every client is different. So that's how I, I got it. So anyway, going back to your question, I stopped it. I, I okay, I passed because the degree here is not recognized. I passed the interview, and then I was teasing to Richard Ho and uh, 
execute or Chan, that why don't you just give me the, the license? I was just joking. Because they did that to Bedmar. He's an Argentinian architect. Again, his degree is not uh, being recognized in, with, uh, in SIA, but they just gave him the license because of the contribution he did for the architectural uh, in Singapore. So I managed to pass. I've done all my logbook. I've yet to, to sign. <laughs> Ah, sit in for the exam. Uh, Nick, sit. Woha. In one word. I in one word each. Oh, okay. Flexible, yet rigid. SCDA. Oh, I know Chan Sukian personally. He's he's from Penang. He's a Malaysian converted because he became a Singaporean. SCDA is unique. I learned so much from him. I'm quite happy. Sorry, I'm telling you so much more. But when I told you guys that I, I quit the corporate, I was with SAA partnership before. It's a big corporate office. And I wanted to be in a boutique hotel like SCDA, we were only 20 at that time. I learned so much, everything. So that's why I said he's unique. Because I will be, until now, I won't be who I am without SCDA. And Woha, Woha is, for me, one word, adaptable. For me personally, if you see what they have done in movies and I call it the lipstick <laughs> building, all this, they almost have, they are from Kerry Hill Architects before. Richard Hassel is an Australian guy, you know, but woman um, they have the same thing. What my principal, they are in Singapore, they learn from an Aussie architect, how they made it very tropical and invented their own language. So that's why I said they're unique. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's Woha. Yeah. Oh, well, they're quite big right now, but uh, two principal architects. <laughs>